Hey everybody, where do I even begin? It's been an uncomfortable, awkward, messy period of blah the last few months. Kind of like being in limbo again. <laughs> Last year until November we were in Scotland for six months and during that time I was having a shit time being pregnant. Honestly I was puking daily for months. I was so fatigued that walking across my flat felt like running a marathon. Pregnancy is so beautiful. Anyway, if you follow me elsewhere on social media, you might know that I ran into a nightmare when it came time to fly back to New Zealand. I won't revisit the whole nightmare again in detail, and I already wrote like a whole big thing about it on my website. So I won't talk about the whole clusterfuck nightmare debacle of getting back to New Zealand, just what's been going on since we've come back. We returned to New Zealand in November from Scotland. Plan was to spend a couple of days with Mr. Al's aunt and uncle, pick up my car, and drive down from Wellington where we'd been living down to Dunedin where we'd be moving. To Dunedin where we would already have a lovely house rented and ready and waiting for us to arrive and move in. Shortly after a moving company would remove all our household belongings from a storage container in Wellington and bring them to us in Dunedin. All in a nice timely manner before the baby arrived. However, my car apparently needed a bunch of parts, <laughs> which took several days and a fuck gallon of money that I didn't have in order to get its warrant of fitness so that it could legally be on the road. We ended up at his aunt's house for two weeks. During that time, I applied for two or three dozen more rental houses for which all our applications were rejected. I put this down to not being present to attend viewings, but we were assured that it just so happened that a lot of our people were also looking to rent a house at the same time. So when we got to Dunedin, we stayed in a spare room at my dad's house on his farm. I'd actually never stayed stayed with my dad before. My dad had been building an Airbnb style accommodation in one of his sheds. His biggest shed. <laughs> he has many sheds. And the arrangement was that once that was finished being built we would move in there for a few months. We were at my dad's house for two weeks and during that time Mr. Al spent all day every day helping my dad do up the shed, putting up walls, painting, wiring, etc. But it became apparent pretty quickly that despite their efforts, there was no way it was going to be livable anytime soon. It still resembled a workshop, had no running water, pink bats here and there, that kind of thing. Not livable, let alone a suitable environment for a newborn baby. It just so happened that my dad's wife, my stepmother, was having lunch with her cousin one day, who said she had just readied a small flat to rent. And my stepmother said she knew some people who desperately needed a flat. So we came to look at the place and it really wasn't what we've been looking for and really is way too small for our needs but beggars cannot be choosers. Time was running out and at the stage we just really needed a place to live. They very kindly offered us the flat at a reduced rent. We're like okay it's not perfect but it's fine for now. It's fine. It's fine. So we moved in and when I say moved in I mean we brought in our three suitcases. Our household belongings from where we'd lived before all still being in a big storage container up in Wellington which is like the other side of the country. My stepmother found a suitable bed for $50 and lent it to us as well as a cot for Severine and my dad lent us a bit of random furniture he had stored, mostly office furniture. It took about another fortnight to get the internet and everything set up. So by this point we had had no internet for like six or seven weeks. I mean there was enough where we had stayed for things like checking Facebook and sending emails, but not to upload videos or live stream. I uploaded two videos in that time using my phone data. Each took 36 hours to upload and cost me about $50 in data. Shit. Then I had the baby, a wee bit early. And that story is another video which I have linked below to assuage your curiosity. We had a mostly empty house with just the basics to bring the baby home to. But for six weeks we had no couch, no chairs, no cupboards. It was a bit bleak and embarrassing. So now we've been here for about four months and we still don't have our stored belongings down from the container in Wellington. Why is that your husk? I got quotes from moving companies who quoted a cheerful $7,000 for the job. <laughs> yeah, nah. I'd expect to pay that for an international move, not just between islands. What the fuck? Anyway, if you've ever looked after a newborn, you'll know that you suddenly have absolutely no time to do anything except look after the baby. You're lucky if you get time to have a shower. Especially if, like me, you also have a one-year-old. A one-year-old who decides it's a good time to start screaming every day for no reason. I love her, but oh my god. Mr. Al got a wee cleaning job for the meantime until he finds something else. But he's working at night, which means sleeping during the day. Which means it's been pretty much me looking after two babies 24-7. So my life the last 13 weeks or so has just been a blur of milk and screaming. So anyway, let's look at the house. Without actually replacing any of the stuff we have in storage, I've been furnishing the house with everything secondhand, trying to get stuff that kind of matches. In New Zealand you have to be a wee bit creative and crafty. You can't just go out like you can in Europe for example and order a beautiful black velvet baroque mahogany bed. 
God, I missed my bed. Anyway, you have to be a bit creative. I've been getting a lot of things secondhand and I'm going to do them up. So this is kind of a in-between state. So I'll show you our lovely house and where we are now with furnishing it. As you enter, your eyes are assaulted by the most hideous carpet you've ever seen in your life. I'm sorry, but I just, I hate this carpet so much. I respect it because it's like 50 or 70 years old and it looks brand new. You could not design an uglier carpet in my opinion. Everything's kind of like, it's a fucking chaotic bullshit mess, okay? It's really small in here and I've been just basically buying furniture and it's not necessarily where it's gonna go, but everything that isn't black is going to be painted black. I've been trying to get everything this like Queen Anne style. This is a booze cabinet, very nice. I don't know what you can see, but in there I've got my great grandmother's uh, antique silver tea set, which is very nice. Sorry, it's a bit dark in here, but the uh, bulb blew and we can't reach it. Christian death flag from the gig I went to a few years ago. So I've just been trying to find stuff that would look nice black. I also found this beautiful, well, it's a shelf slash console table for the wall. It's gonna look amazing. I can't believe I was able to find something so beautiful in this town. We are hoping to find a better place to move to because honestly, I would not miss the Axminster carpet. It's like every color, every color that doesn't go together. I'm going to try and like store stuff at my dad's house. So I have like surplus things. So for example, I've got these, I've got two single beds. Uh, one you'll see in a second set up sort of, and the other one's just hanging out in the hallway. All the light switches are like this kind of switch. Everything's kind of old. <laughs> I'll show you the doorbell, hang on. God, it's like a hundred years old. Yeah, this house has a lot of character. As you come into the laundry, you'd think that this would be the light switch, but it's, you know, it's the switch for that. The light switch is over here and it's, yeah. When was the last time you saw a plug that looked like this? Down the end of the hallway is the kitchen. So this is the kitchen. It has character. You might notice it's missing a few of the usual features such as a bench or drawers, but it does have this weird cupboard up by the ceiling, which is as big as a room and has a window in it. Like we still haven't actually figured out how to get in there. We don't have a ladder, so. I mean, there's nowhere to really put appliances or anything. Like the microwave's just balancing on this wee shelf with the toaster on top of it and this ugly curtain. Mm. Yellow. Uh. Look at these plugs, would you? That is some kind of retro. And all the shelves are like too small to put any appliances or anything on. The fridge is on loan from my dad. And so is this great big ugly table. I have had worse kitchens in my life. But this one's, it's just weird really. It's just, it's just not proper. It's weird. Anyway, while we're appropriately in the kitchen, it is time for a word from this video's sponsor. And you've probably heard of it. The last couple of weeks, I've been using HelloFresh, who sent all the fresh pre-proportioned ingredients you need right to your door every week to cook your own healthy, balanced, really nice meals. Much more sensible than ordering takeaways and takes away the need to think about what to cook or go out and buy the groceries yourself. It's also cheaper and less wasteful than grocery shopping and 25% cheaper than takeaways. So if you go after this to hellofresh.com and use the code it's black friday 50 you will get 50% off plus your first box ships free. This is like flat pack food. It's the IKEA of dinner. Each meal kit comes with easy to follow instructions that I actually didn't screw up. Not even once. If I can do this, anyone can. It's more work than I usually put into a meal, to be honest, but it felt like a cooking lesson, and I've definitely learned a bit and felt inspired. It's fun and I've enjoyed the challenge. I'm able to make lovely meals even in this woefully inadequate kitchen. With 40 weekly recipes to choose from and 100 seasonal and convenience items each week, there are choices to suit everyone's diet. It's not just dinner either. HelloFresh covers lunches, snacks, desserts, even special occasions. Mmm, actually pretty good. It's almost like a competent person cooked it. So go to hellofresh.com, enter the code, it's Black Friday 50 for 50% off, plus free shipping on your first box. Pretty cool, why not? Actually a very good deal. Right up. carrying on. The kitchen leads into a second small bedroom. It's a bit kind of random in here and chaotic. I know. If you were expecting a beautiful, cool gothic nursery, sorry to disappoint. One day we'll have one, but in the meantime, we just have stuff that's like borrowed or not finished or whatever. This is the toy box that I'm planning on painting or decorating or doing up. Someone once said, are the baby toys the, mo the only colourful thing in your house? I was like, actually yes. I got two of these beds. It's not obviously like made up or anything. I just thought they were so beautiful. I had to have them. That's the other 
bed head obviously for the other bed but I'm going to do them both black I'm going to make the fabric black I'm going to do the outside bit all in black and a bit of silver so it'll be black and silver I think that would look very very smart that'll be Severine's bed eventually this toy is mine because it describes me at the moment it's a milk whale it's me as a toy this little side table here was like just given to us when I got the bed this cot is just on loan until we get our stuff done and there's a cupboard over here where all like the nice baby clothes are hung up pretty dresses and smart suits and things hello The first thing that annoys me about the bathroom is the towel rails are so close to the wall that it's actually like really hard to fit a towel over it. Kind of a random shape. Got all my skincare stuff in here, I got half a shelf just for sunscreens. Have added a personal touch to the bathroom with this shower curtain from Killstar. But look at the shower, would you? What's going on here? It just goes straight down. This like disc on the ceiling. And the bathtub's like rounded on the bottom, so it's actually quite hard to keep your balance. It does make very nice baths. Not that I get a chance to have baths much these days. I got this wee table the other day for free. I thought, oh, I could do that up and sell it, or, but actually I quite like it. So I think what I'll do is I'll sand it and paint it glossy black and keep it. I think it's very cute. And now let's go into the living room, slash dining room, slash office, slash playroom. Um, it's not just the carpet in the hallway that offends me, it's also the brown carpet everywhere else. Anyway, like I said, we had no furniture for six weeks, so I've been accumulating things. Everything's second hand, pretty much, and some things were insanely cheap. Also, everything that isn't black is going to be black. There are two of these recliners, the other one's in the bedroom. I got both of these recliners for a dollar. It's not beautiful, but it's extremely comfortable. My dad just rang one day and said, oh, we've got you a couch. Okay, thank you. <laughs> $20 couch. Also, not beautiful, but you can sit on it. This is a piece of modern art. It's really about what you're not seeing, you know? I'm accumulating picture frames, uh, which I'm also going to paint black, and that picture's going away. I'm going to you know, put some cool art in them and stuff. Just we side tables. I think that one was $10. That might have also been $10. This dresser was $2 and it's really nice. $2. These chairs are going to go into storage but this ugly fucking table was already here so I, I covered it up with a nice tablecloth. These chairs are second hand. They're going to be painted black. Everything that isn't black is going to be black. I found this nice mirror. These shelves are so beautiful. Like I love them. They're so beautiful. The wee scowls that were on there have fallen off and broken. But anyway, uh, I'm going to paint those black. I'll share pictures and stuff on Instagram when it's done. I love these. They're meant to be like those three ducks that a lot of people have in their house. This side of the room's Mr. Owl's lair. His like green screen and a borrowed desk. Not very aesthetic, but this is like a playpen and we can pull it out so that Severine like has a wee playpen. When she's roaming free we just fence her out of the technology because that's what she always wants to play with. My least favourite part of this room is this hideous fucking fireplace. Boarding up fireplaces is monstrous in my opinion. What's even worse is putting a hideous gas heater in front of it. Blech. I've tried to add a few wee homely touches here and there. The trouble is in New Zealand when you rent a place you can't do much to it, you know? So like I can't paint this fireplace, I can't change the heater, I can't do anything. There's another wee shelf over in this corner which I got for eight dollars um, and I've actually got one of these like whatnot shelves for the floor and I'm gonna when we get that down from the storage I'm gonna put that underneath that. It's still a bit bleak but it's a good deal less bleak than it was. Far from the beautiful flat I had over in Germany but I'm doing my best with the resources that are available to me at this time. Everywhere I go I see what I can do with the room. I always see potential. In the case of this place, you know, in the nicest way possible. Are you familiar with the phrase rolling shit and glitter? It's difficult to say which room is the most chaotic, bleak and ugly but uh, the bedroom's definitely one of them. This is the $50 bed and it's also got borrowed bedding on it apart from the black stuff that's mine. It's got these like green sheets. <laughs> I bought that mirror, I put up that wee curtain, but you know, really, what's the point? I got given an interestingly shaped set of drawers. So yeah, I'm trying to get everything in this Queen Anne style of furniture. My dad said he just happened to have a uh, part of a bedroom set in his attic in Queen Anne. He said, oh, for my birthday I could have them, so that's nice. I found this interesting shelf. These two things, I found them in a second hand shop. I thought they were bookends. I don't really know what they are. Um, so I painted them black and just hung them on the wall and I thought they look, they would look cool with like candles on them or something. So that shelf's going to be black. Yeah, basically everything's going to be black. Just all my jewellery is just scattered 
everywhere. I think boarding up fireplaces is a monstrous thing to do, especially if it's in a bedroom. They heat so well, they make you feel nice, they smell nice, you can get rid of rubbish. Eventually I'll put one of those like fake fire heaters in front of it, but uh, there's a wee wardrobe thing over here for my clothes. I don't have that many things here with me but it's not like there's anywhere to go out to so me. These are probably the least effective curtains ever they just make the bright sunlight slightly yellower. Every room I see I go oh I could do that with it I could do that with it I could do that with it. I mean I don't know how long we'll live here for so I probably won't bother but I'm like oh yeah you know I could make black velvet curtains with a bit of a bit of a swag here and there would look quite nice but what's the point? I like the style of furniture because it looks nice, it's relatively easy to come by and it's generally pretty cheap and everything looks better glossy black so there's like a lot of brown <laughs> around at the moment, lots of brown, brown furniture, brown carpet. <laughs> there's a rather unremarkable outside area, it's mostly just a big square of weeds but you know low maintenance and sometimes cats come and visit us which is really nice, neighbours cats. Ooh. So thanks very much for joining me, tell me in the comments your opinion of the carpet. Do you like it? Because some people have said they like it and I find those people's opinions very questionable. What do you think of the carpet, Mr. Al? Yeah. I love it. Beautiful. You're just goading me. No, no. You are. I mean, it's awesome. What's awesome about it? It's retro. Not in a good way. There's no, old and then there's old. There's, you know. You know about style. Well, and you apparently. Tell us what you think of the Axe Monster. <laughs> Every morning I get up and it offends my senses. Anyway, if you have not already done so, please subscribe to my channel. It makes you cooler. And as always, take care of yourself. Be nice to each other. Stay amazing, and I'll see you next time. Bye.